Welcome to Tool Tuesday. Today we are going to talk about planes. Okay, so last time uh, we talked about knives and the plane is uh, in a way a very advanced knife uh, because the trick with the knife is when you cut you can easily cut too much but with the plane it's more con controllable so you can adjust how much you want the plane to cut away. So that being said, it doesn't mean that the plane is easier to use than a knife, uh, but once you get to know how to use this, uh, it's, a, it's a really one of the best tools and really one of the most used tools when it comes to violin making. So today for you, I made uh, this small uh, display with all my planes and there's a lot you know from the big one this is the Stanley number seven it's a it's a beast it's really big you need two strong hands to use that to the smallest one which is the one people love to see when they come here it's a, it's a very tiny small finger plane and then you have all the the other planes in between these two and I will go through them and explain you a bit about the differences between. So I think we will start with the biggest one which I just introduced. This is a big um, Stanley plane. I bought this when I was uh, a student in, in uh, Cremona, violin making student. Uh, it was a huge expense, of course, going to the small shop there and buying this for my for my uh, student pocket. Pocket. It was um, it, yeah, it was um, a big investment. So you know, a good plane it will last for your life. And the first problem you will encounter with buying planes, if they are flat on the on the curve, because some violin making planes are not play, uh, uh, not flat underneath like this, it's curved, but I will get back to, the, to that later. So if it's flat kind of plane, uh, sometimes this surface is actually not flat when you buy it. So what to do then? Well, I uh, bought a, like a huge piece of stone, I went to the cemetery in Cremona and got this marble, piece of marble, which was completely flat. And I just glued some uh, sandpaper on top, the sandpaper you use for metal. And then I was grinding together with my friend uh, Bernard, um, you know, for many days like this, back and forth. Because you can imagine uh, making a flat surface out of this uh, by hand. It's just take a ridiculously long time but um, you do it once and then you get it for life so the reason you want a really a flat sole on your flat plane is because well it's logic when you plane something you want to make it flat and then if the sole is flat then if you're good at planing and sharpening of course uh, the result will be also flat or very close so that's one of the first pro tips uh, that you will get today. And um, this is used for uh, planing large pieces of wood for cello, violin, viola, even bass. Um, and sometimes it can be uh, also done by an electrical plane, uh, like a big machine, but you know, um, not every a violin maker can, can uh, have an electrical one, so then this is really useful and it makes you know strong muscles. As you can see here, I made some nice olive wood uh, handles on this, so that's really nice. It's, it's, a, it's a copy of the original ones which were in plastic. Um, so that's like my personal touch to this plane. Um, so then the next one is. Uh, the plane I use the most, which is a Stanley number nine or nine and a half, I think. And this one I actually use for almost everything. 
you can use it for you know um, flattening out big pieces of wood, um, jointing the top and the back, uh, preparing the neck, um, and many other tasks throughout the making of a violin. Uh, and it's really nice because once you have the the blade in here, I will show you. There are several ways you can adjust the plane. So one of them being the, the opening of the mouth. So you just unscrew this screw and then you can slide with this one here, slide it open. And that will adjust the size of the, I think we can call it the mouth. You see this one goes now up and down. Okay. And what is, what is the point with this? Well, when you work with hardwoods like maple with a lot of flames, Making a small opening here will make it easier for you to plane and with less tearing of the wood. So for spruce and soft wood, it's really not very important how you adjust this opening. Um, but for uh, hard woods and curled woods like flame maple, uh, it's, really, it's really important to set this to a very, very small opening. So here you can see basically how most, well, at least some of these planes are, are made. Uh, so, as mentioned before, you have, have this uh, opening here. You have this slider, which will adjust the plane blade from side to side. So, it goes in there. So, this one moves from side to side. And then this one goes on the top. And will be locked by this one here. And then once you have set the blade in, you, you will adjust it sideways with this one. And just looking down um, from this way, you can see where the blade is actually coming out. And then also close here to the opening you need, okay? And then when you start planning, you want to start most of the time just taking away small amounts of wood and just make sure that the plane is set up well. So I do that by uh, tightening here. So now I, I, I pulled back the, the blade all the way. There's no, no blade coming out. And then I start tightening this. And at the same time, I feel with my thumb, I do like this small back and forth, this movement. And I feel where the blade is actually coming out of the opening. And then I can also uh, understand if it's more on the right or the left side, and then I can adjust that with, with this slider. So it's really, it's a great tool. And also this one, it's easier uh, to make it flat because when you buy it, it the sole hair is not flat. So then again, do the same thing, put the sandpaper on something flat and just, you know, work, make some uh, nice muscles there. Then I have uh, this one, it's a Lee Nielsen. It's a very nice um, small plane, um, but it, it doesn't have the adjustable opening. So I'm, it's a really nice, uh, nicely made plane and it has a thicker blade. Um, but in reality, I, I prefer the, the Stanley. Uh, then I have this one here. Um, well, it's, it's a very, uh, let's say, small and quick uh, plane. I bought it in, in Cremona when I was a student. Um, yeah, it's, it's good for some, you know, roughing out, but it's a very kind of rough plane and yeah, can be used for uh, small things. Also, I mean, this one can also be used for the, for the arching, okay? Do you like the new glasses, by the way? Um, got them last week, so I'm very happy. I'm, I'm able to see you better now and uh, hopefully you will see me as well. Um, then we will move to the smaller blades. Uh, excuse me, the smaller planes. So as you can see here, I have um, a small group here with uh, flat planes. Uh, well, they have a flat sole, just like this one is flat. And then for these ones, they also have a flat. Uh, surface underneath. And these ones I use for 
uh, arching uh, base bars, fitting base bars, that's really, for me, is the best. Some people fit their base bar with knife or a chisel, even a file. If you set this really well up, it's, it's a great tool and it's much quicker. Um, these ones are made in brass and you can also uh, make a small modification to this. It's, it's a bit hard to see on the camera, but the opening here for the, for the, um, uh, for the blade was actually much uh, bigger. So I inserted a piece of brass here uh, and made it really nice and tight and, um, and, and more user friendly for violin making. So I made that with yeah, nearly all my my um, my uh, planes. You can s you can see some signs left here on the on the inside from the soldering. Um, of course, this is a bit more tricky to adjust because well, you just unscrew the screw and then you can you know go back and forth, uh, not so much sideways. So when you sharpen the blade, you take out the blade like this. When you sharpen it, you really have to take care that it's 90 degrees, this uh, angle to, to the sides. Um, some people are um, making a small round corner on, on each side of the blade. Um, I don't, but I guess that's a, like a personal preference. Um, and then we have these really special uh, planes for violin making, which are some people call them um, um, subplanes, um, and the, the main reason, the main, the main difference between this and this uh, is the sole. So this is flat and this is slightly curved, meaning, you guessed right, you can use it on the insides of the plates of the instrument. Because usually with, with a flat plane you can, you know, make something flat or something that is curved that way. But once you want to carve in a way with the plane on the inside, then you need a curved plane. And we have many different kinds of this and many different sizes. So this is the biggest one I use for cello. And uh, then for violin, all these small ones, these two are uh, the same, but the blades are different. So this one has a tooth, toothed uh, plane, uh, blade and this one is normal. Um, the difference being, I can explain you that as well. Um, this is a blade for this one, for the Stanley. And this also has small teeth um, on top here. That means you can work with really hard grain uh, you know, with with the grain direction running all over the place. Um, if you were to use a normal plane on that uh, kind of wood, it will tear up very easily. With a toothed uh, blade, it's much easier. So I also have, like I just uh, showed you, uh, two different ones. Um, and um, then this is really nice because even though it's small, I can actually unscrew this uh, screw here and adjust the opening of the mouth in the front. So that's a really, really cool, nice, small um, uh, plane. And uh, well, they vary in size because uh, according to where or on, on, for example, the arching you are working, you need a different size. So the smallest one, the, the only way, uh, place I actually use this it's more like the lower wing of, of the violin, just for the finishing work. Because you don't take away a lot of work, uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of wood at the time. Um, but, you know, in certain places, this is really nice. Okay, so that's like a short introduction to planes. And um, even though it's a Wednesday today, this was Tool Tuesday. Um, I'll come back next week with a new video about tools and um, looking forward to see you then. Thank you for watching.